This one is about big jokes getting buried on Thursday. This is about big jokes getting buried on Thursday. Should Yo Gotti show up to the public funeral? That's what this is about. Sit back. I'm going to give my opinion on what I would do, not what he should do, what I would do. So let's get that straight for the rat bastards and flip-flop wearing in public trolls. All right? This is what I would do. Let's get that straight. I All right, you know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. I'm here, man. Should Yo Gotti go to his brother Juke's public funeral on Thursday? And put it in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. We're going to start this conversation going, you know. Should he go to his brother's funeral on Thursday? That's what we want to know. Now, if that was me, right, let's get this right, right? Funeral on Thursday, I'm going to have extra security, mad security. You understand? Everybody got to be on point. Everybody got to be on point. But I'm going to know that everyone that I have on point is on the payroll. Everyone on point is on the payroll. Now, the reason why I emphasize that and stress that is because as long as I know in my mind that they on the payroll, I know that they're not supposed to be trusted because they're there to get a dollar, period. Their objective is to get a dollar. My objective is to get security. That's it. So it's no friendship, no bond, no nothing. I'm on militant time all the way around the board. I'm watching the security. I may have to lay down the security. You understand? If the security look like he's thinking about infiltrating me by letting somebody pass the rope, you know, that they know to get in, to get close or whatever, just me, I got to I'm just keeping it 100. You know what I mean? But that's how you have to have the mentality when you're on the street. Now, that's why I say I don't wish that on no one. Going through life trusting no one give you a lot of trauma. I have a lot of trauma. I'm not going to say I don't have a lot of trauma. If I hear footsteps walking up behind me, I'm reaching, pulling out, <laughs> and turning around, you know, with pistol in the hand. That's how it has to be when you're in a situation like this because you know that it's war and you just lost your brother and your brother was connected to the soldiers. And Jukes had excellent soldiers. Let's say that. We're not even going to go, go. We're not even going to play no games. Those brothers down there, they held them down. They did their thing, you know. But there's a thing called casualty of war. You know, like I said, my brother was a casualty of war. So I can't sit here and blame the soldiers because of my brother's demise. You understand what I'm saying? But that's how serious this is that we have to know that there's casualties of war. So now I'm going to make sure that I got extra security. I'm on point and I'm not trusting anyone. This is me. So I don't need nobody saying that I'm trying to... Uh, you know, tell this young man what to do, how to do. No, could never do that because he have to live the way he feel he needs to live to move forward. But me, myself, I'm not trusting anyone. I'm looking at everyone as a suspect. Everyone is a suspect to me. I lost my brother, so I can't trust anyone. And that's the way it is. So if you want to enter that life, feel free to do it so that you can torment yourself like I'm doing and wake up with hot sweats and cold sweats middle of the night, right? Just so you understand. No one is to be trusted in a situation like this. No one at all. The feds will be there. So there's going to be security. <laughs> but will the feds protect the people? 
Oh, yeah. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Subscribe right now if you're not subscribed. I'm going to give you about three seconds to subscribe. This is the time to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And that's the main thing. Of course, the likes. You already know that. And give a brother emoji. But make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. The feds will be there. The feds will be there taking pictures and videos. Let me give you, you know, because you know I like to ride, you know. Y'all love when I ride and I love to ride. You know what I mean? That's why I had 30 whips. I love to ride. Now, I'm going to take you back to when I was on the street. And it was one of our good brothers. And I ain't got to say no names. The people that don't know, the people that don't, don't need to know. One of my good brothers got into a situation down there in Virginia because, you know, something was going on and it wound up turning into war. And it wasn't even his beef. He was just the leader of the car, right? The group, the gang, whatever you want to call it nowadays. But he was the leader of the crew. Right? That's what we called it back then. He was the leader of the crew. One of his workers did something. And uh, next thing you know, they came, tried to roll up on him. And when they went to roll up on him, they came in through the front door and they came in bussing. Bang, 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 bang. So when they came in bussing, homie ran out the back door and the crew ran out the back door to get away from the shooters that was coming in the front door. As soon as he ran out in the back door, you know what I mean? So we ran out the back door, everybody started hitting. Bow, 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 and started firing. So he hears a noise to the right, and he turns to the right, and he, bang. You know what I mean? He wets up somebody from his own crew. You see how this is? And then now, so you understand how this play out, right? After he wet up somebody from his own crew behind that, right? They turned around and when dude got hit, he, they go to the hospital and dude passed, but they know who they was having the beef with. So being they knew who they was having the beef with, that's who they targeted for the hit. But it wasn't even his bullet, you know? But when he got picked up for it, to keep his soldiers and his security out, what he did was... He had to claim it. It wasn't him. It wasn't his crew. It wasn't none of them, but he got picked up for it. He couldn't tell it wasn't my bullet. It was his bullet. It was this bullet. It was that bullet. Couldn't do none of that. So he wound up taking it all the way, and then he copped out to, I think, a malicious wounding or something that carried like maybe seven years down there and wound up doing seven years. Now, when that happened, you understand, they had... Another incident happened, you know, but I'm going to get back to the other incident. I'm going to show you how they go together because we ride. We ride. But now with this Yo Gotti situation, he have to move with patience. You can't be hot headed in war. If you hot headed in war, then you're not thinking rationally because you didn't let the plan go from lukewarm to warm to hot. You let the plan go from cold straight to hot. You missed everything in between, and that's where you wind up bumping your head. So you have to use patience and feel the heat as it's going up, and you bring the heat as far as the pressure as you moving forward to keep your crew alive and on top. You see, I'm sitting here thinking... I don't want y'all to have to go through none of this that I'm sitting here going through. So that's why I'm telling y'all right now, don't get involved in the street. Don't do none of that because it's not worth it, man. At all, it's not worth it. If y'all don't understand that it's not worth it by me spending 26 years in federal prison to be able to tell y'all, you know, today on YouTube, these Jews that I'm giving you, I don't know what to tell you. I think, you know, he should have, yo Gotti, I think he should have the public funeral because Jukes is a public figure, you know, and he's loved by the public, you know. And I think he shouldn't go to that funeral because that's for the public, and he's not the public. That's for the fans and supporters. So have that for them. And then have a private joint for yourself and your family members and the ones you know you could trust. 
the ones you feel you could trust because we don't know nothing except for what step we making next. We don't know what the next person is thinking. But I think he should have the private funeral, don't show up to that, and then have, you know, I mean, the public funeral, don't show up to that, and then have a private funeral. And that's how I would do it. Just saying how I would do it, you know, because I'm not trusting nobody and I don't need to do it, you know. And I wouldn't tell them the date of the private funeral. I, I would air it so they could see it if they'd like to see it. But I wouldn't tell them the date because to them, he's big jokes. To Yo Gotti, that's my brother. So I should be able to bury my brother in peace. Like I said, you know, because I'm riding. <laughs> Like I said, I'm riding. My brother caught two to the head out in Seattle, Washington while I was locked up right after I got sentenced. I couldn't claim the body. They didn't want no one else to go claim the body. And I know you rat bastards and trolls say, oh, you told this already. Well, shut up or get off the channel because right now I'm bringing it in to make a point. All right? So that's why I mention it again. And a lot of people just come and didn't see it. So if you was here every day and saw it, don't complain that I mentioned it again. You could change the channel. I'm going to give you three seconds. All right. There you go. And you already know. Take that on the way out. <laughs> All right. So now, they wouldn't even let me claim my own brother's body. He was a casualty of war. I still didn't get to fully cry and mourn for my brother because I just got sentenced to life plus 20 two weeks prior. So I had to focus on getting that off my back. That was like having five gorillas on your back. You know how they say kicking dope is the hardest thing because you got a monkey on your back? Well, that's one monkey. Imagine having five silverback, 10, 100 silverbacks on your back. That's what it felt like doing my life sentence. So I had to focus on that instead of sitting there crying about my brother. Over those 26 years, tears done slipped in here and there, sometimes while I was awake, sometimes while I was walking the compound, sometimes while I was standing in the food line, I thought about my brother and I had to wipe a tear and keep it moving. But I didn't let the people around me know that was going on because that shows a sign of weakness because I know that he's a casualty of war and he's gone now. So I can't keep speaking on him and, oh, I miss my brother, I miss my brother. I already know I miss him in my heart, so I don't need to say it out my mouth because we don't do that. You have to let them transform to the next level in peace. Every time you say their name, you're stopping them from getting to heaven. I wanted my brother to get to heaven so I couldn't keep talking about, oh, I miss my brother Khalif. I can't believe they did that to my brother Khalif. No, shit happens. And that's my brother. See how raw I'm saying it? Because that's how raw you got to be. If you don't agree with me being raw and cold-hearted like this, that means you're on the right path to being human. Because I, lo I lost a lot of my human compassion and things that was given to me by God at birth from a baby, from the things that I've went through from my choices in life that I take responsibility for. And I don't want to have to sit there hearing someone else talking about their brother, that he's just a casualty of war and that shit happens when he dies. So I know I'm screwed up. I know this. But after what I've been through, what do you expect? Right now, young God is going through so much turmoil right now that I know he, I know he's, you know, I know he's screwed up, man. If he's not screwed up, that means he's crazy. Because you can't imagine the pain. The pain. See me, right? Because, you know, I'm a ride. But I'm trying to fix what lane I'm going to go down with y'all, right? Let me give y'all one more before. Okay, now we're talking about the pain, so I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to get to the other one. In my book, A Roar in Harlem, I got a chapter, like maybe chapter five in, in my book, where I speak on, you know, I went to the zoo to go talk to the lion to get courage and strength to deal with the same type of situation as your God is going through. I had to go to get courage from the lion 
the king of the jungle. Let me explain to you how that worked. When I was in Jamaica, before my mother brought me to America, she took me to the local zoo. She brought me in front of the lion, and she said, you're my little lion, the lion of Judah. Those that know know what that is. Say, so if you ever have anything that you can't handle and you know is not civilized to handle, you go see the king of the jungle and talk to the king. So when I had to go tell one of my comrades' mothers that he got murdered while we was out in the jokes, when that happened, I had the cab driver, because I was a kid, I couldn't even drive. I had the cab driver, you know, we called him an OJ back then. An OJ was like a, a Oldsmobile 98, you know, De Delta Deuce and a quarter, you know, Cadillac had the boomerang and 10 on the top with the Vogue's, uh, um, with the Vogue tires and the spoke rims and, you know what I mean? And the tinted windows and, you know, come on, you know, and let's not forget again, the boomerang and 10 on the back. Y'all don't even know what the boomerang and 10 is, but that's how you get TV from that boomerang and 10 to be able to get TV in the car back then before Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? So... I had the cab driver pull over at the zoo. When the cab driver pulled over at the zoo, I got out and I limped down to that cage because I was shot up four times and had to jump off a six-story building. I limped down to that cage with my pistol in my hand because I couldn't trust nobody, not even the cab driver that brought me there or someone that I might have mentioned about having to see the lion in tough times being there waiting to see me as I'm going to talk to the lion. I rolled up to the lion's cage with my nine millimeter in my hand and I got down on my knees and I looked that lion in the eyes and I said, oh Lord, I know you're within this lion and I need your strength now more than ever. I have to go tell my comrade's mother that she lost her baby boy from the foolishness that we was doing. And I asked the lion to give me strength. The lion was pacing around in the cage as I'm talking, like if he was listening and he was thinking. And then the lion let out a ferocious roar. You know, and he came right over there to me and he laid down in the front of the cage where I was at and he put his head down. I stuck my little hand through the cage and I rubbed his mane. And he didn't even bite me. And that's when I felt like I was connected to the lion. Then I went to go see my man's mother and had to break the bad news. Of course, she caught me all kinds of filthy animals and held me responsible for her baby boy losing his life. Even though it was his jokes that he had planned that I went to assist him on. I had to take the blame for it. I couldn't stand up and tell his mother, no, you know, your son is the one that had the joke. Your son this, your son that. I just stood there. And then his mother started pounding on me. I'm about 13 years old. His mother pounding on me. And as she's pounding on me, as she's pounding on me, I'm reaching for my nine millimeter. And this is my man's mother. Because this is how my mind was trained. I'm ready to do my man's mother for beating on me. And I had to catch myself and release the grip off the pistol and just let her get out her frustration, you know, on me. And I turned around and I walked out that house. But that's how I handled a situation like that. God, he got to figure out what he needs to handle his situation to keep his sanity for me to keep my sanity i had to go talk to a lion that don't even talk back and in my mind he heard everything i said and he spoke back when he let out that ferocious roar you see how crazy these streets make you when you run the streets this how you want to be is this how you want to be when you can't trust no one when you talking to a lion and believing that the lion is listening and talking back to you? 
But I tell you what, from that day to this day, I'm still alive. I lost my brother during the struggle. I lost my mans in Virginia, my mans in D.C., you know, my mans in Miami. I lost them everywhere. I lost them everywhere. I got anxiety like you wouldn't believe. They gave it a title. Back then, they just said I was wildin'. I was bugging from all the trauma that I went through. Nowadays, they call it, what is it, PPSD, post-traumatic PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's what they said that, you know, that I got from everything I've been through. But I'm not going to let them label and give me no initials to nothing because at the end of the day, I'm just unique. And unique made the wrong choice, screwed his life up and screwed his mind up and living like Like I got demons with me. Like I got demons with me. That's what's so crazy. Like I got demons with me. But like I said, the feds is going to be there at the funeral. Because we riding, you know. The feds going to be there at the funeral. They're going to be taking pictures. You know, they're going to be taking videotape. They're going to be taking a list of names. You know, so this is what I know is a fact. Because... When my comrade lost his life down there in Virginia, the feds was there and they was hoping I would show up to the funeral so they could finally get a picture of me because they didn't even know who I was. They just knew the name. But I'm going to ride and tell you another one because I feel like riding. I'm going to ride and tell you another one. We got a homie, right? We got a homie that was from D.C., but he moved, you know, down to North Carolina. He goes down to North Carolina and he's doing real good down there, relocated. His family, he read me from DC, family moved to North Carolina, he went back to DC back and forth, so he had a, you know, a, a dual state relationship. So he's down there in North Carolina and he's doing his thing, he get mad money. I, somebody introduced me to him, I started selling to him, and he used to meet me different places, and I used to be able to, you know, and I'm just keeping it 100, you know what I mean? I used to be able to take one key, make 1,800 grams wet, if you know what that is. 1,800 grams wet, you know? Wet mean, put in the comment what wet means, and I'm going to get back to that. But I sit there, and I take a key, make 1,800 grams, and I sell them each gram, gram for gram. So I would sell them a key for 25,000, and then I give them the other eight, you know, 100 grams, you know, for like 15,000. So I made 40,000 off of one key that I paid $10,000 for. And he was happy and I was happy. Remember, put in the comments what wet means, <laughs> you know, you know, the, the water weight. Um, so when this happens, I start dealing with him and it was a drought. And my brother had all the drugs and my brother didn't want to sell, you know, the North Carolina dudes no drugs because he was supplying his Virginia side. So now while he down there, somebody else went to go sell him some drugs. And like I said, this dude used to meet me like, you know, in the mall, in the 7-Eleven, you know, the gas station. You know, we met up and just made the transaction. He went to meet somebody to make a transaction in the back, you know, of a, uh, of a department store. It was late night. When he goes in the back of the apartment store to go make the thing, they pulled out and they opened up on him. And they gunned him down. Because when they was walking up, they had, you know, the pistols in their hand out or whatever. So when this happened, he ran, you know, tried to run them over. So he's uh, trying to run them over. So as he's trying to run them over, Oh, that was the phone ring. I didn't even see it. Now, as he tried to run them over, they started shooting and they aired them out. All right. When the feds went and found the body, he still had the fire. Uh, he still had, you know, the 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 hundred and uh, the the the, the hundred and twenty five thousand cash in the car. And they like, whoa, black man killed, gunned down, 125,000 cars. They didn't take it. It wasn't a robbery, <laughs> you know? 
but it was a robbery, but they didn't know that it was a robbery because the money was there. They didn't know that the dude wasn't no sucker, so you know what I mean? He tried to get away when he seen him. He didn't have his pistol with him, so he didn't bust, so they didn't see him shoot back. So they figured that it was just a hit, but it wasn't a hit. So now the feds want to know what's going on because, of course, the feds came in Carolina. And when the feds came in Carolina, they ran down on him. And when it was time to have my man's funeral, they had so many FBI agents there that was dressed like us. Looking like one of us. And you would think that it's somebody from the family. It's a family member. It said this, it said that. But it wasn't none of that. It was the feds. And they taking pictures of everything. Mm -hmm. So my homies that did go to funeral, they hit me back and they let me know. They said, yo, the feds was down there deep. Man, it's a good thing you didn't come. First of all, I don't go to funerals. I talked about it in that, that in my book of Raw in Harlem, if I'm not mistaken. I had an issue with a black cat when I was in Jamaica. Grandpa told me never go to a funeral, never even go to his funeral. So I don't do funerals anyway. So I didn't go to neither funeral, you know. So when this happens, Feds was down there taking mad pictures. I know dudes that kill dudes and, like I said, go to the funeral, go to the wake, you know what I mean, and kiss the dead body. And say in front of everybody how much he love him and he miss him. Turn around, hug his mother and kiss his mother with the same lips he kissed the dead body with. Tell him how much he loved her son and missed him when he was the killer. That's how vicious it is on the street. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. And hit the like button and hit the uh, bell notification. But that's how serious it is on the street. You can't trust anyone, man. You can't trust anyone. So if that's how you want to live, feel free to go down there and do that, you know? So I think he should have a private funeral, you know? And now, the way he should move, if I was him, the way I would move, the way I would move, the way I always move, but this is how I move, just to give you that, you know? You know what? I'm going to say that for the next joint, man. Because I've been on here long enough on that. I don't want to give you all too much. Y'all, who this? Yeah. Hey, brother, man, I've been, I've been trying to get you a book, man. Uh, a Roar in Harlem? Uh, uh, yeah, Roar in Harlem. All right, just put in a Roar. Listen, put a Roar in Harlem.com in the Google or the, um, or the Bing. And for the website, it's a website. You can get it from the website, all right? Okay, but I'm, I'm trying to send it to somebody that's incarcerated and they only... All uh, right, but we'll deal with that after because right now uh, um, I'm doing a video. So if you want to give a shout out, you can give a shout out. This it's being pre-recorded. You want to give a shout out? If you don't want, you don't have to. Like I said, always let everybody know what time it is. But before you say anything personal, let you know you're being recorded. All right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to send that to somebody incarcerated, but they only take them from uh Yeah, I understand from a publisher. I got you on that. I got you on that. You want to say something while you're on live right now? You're not yes, live, but you're being recorded. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, brother. Uh, you know, I, I really admire you for what you did, you mm. know, and, uh, you know, you got yourself together and, and, and doing good for the folks and uh, giving them a lot of knowledge. Mm. And I'm, 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 I'm originally from New Jersey. What part? I'm a Jersey boy, Asbury Park. Oh, man, I used to be down at Asbury Park with mathematics and them back in, uh, like, 87, 88. <laughs> I know mathematics. Yes, yeah. sir, I do. Yeah, but yeah. tell me, reach out. I haven't seen them since back then. I used to hustle down there, you okay. know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good, bro. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. you know, that's where we at, man. But just uh, text me your name and number right now. As soon as I get off, I'll hit you back, give you the info, all right? Okay, appreciate you, bro. All right, family. All right, thank you. All right, one. All right. Yeah. But like you said, you see, I, I do answer my phone. So y'all can't say, see, I don't answer the phone. I might have answered when you want me to answer. Because like I said, if I'm out, I'm not going to be here with my phone in my hand talking about I'm texting this, I'm doing. Oh, yeah, the, the gear that I'm wearing is called Bigger Than Life. My man Big Ock from, you know, from uh, up the valley, you know what I mean? Co-op, you know, he be in Harlem, Brooklyn, Atlanta, Cali. He's internationally known. He got his website getting ready to come out. It's called Bigger Than Life. Ain't this shit flavor? And the hood actually has a lining in it. Let me show you the logo. This is the Bigger Than Life joint. This is his 50th anniversary joint. So I'm going to show you this real quick so you can see what we're dealing with. You know what I mean? This is his 50th anniversary joint, man. Bigger Than Life. The joint is woke. And look, he got the joint all on the sleeve. And you know the anniversary. And then over here, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? He got the 50th, you know, um, 50th um, year hip hop on other sleep. You know, this is my man, Big Out. Make sure you check my man, join out. But like I said, this is where we at, man. I've been on here long enough. I'm going to do a whole nother video about trusting no one and how I move when I was on the street because I don't want to make this too long. I've been on here long enough, you know? But just know, man, that rest in peace to Big Jokes, Young Dolph, King Vaughn, uh, FBG Duck, you know, my brother, you know, Khalif, you know, and everyone else that lost a soldier doing these wars on the street while we trying to find ourselves, man. And this is not to disrespect anybody, but I have to get these messages out there for the youth. I try and watch what I say because I want to give Big Jukes all the props, all the, you know, the respect that he deserved, the flowers that he deserved because he's a man on man time, you know? And, you know, that's what this is about. So, but... Man, this is sad, man. Just let me tap out because I'm about to get a little emotional because you already know, like I said, I'm crazy as hell up here, man. Alright. Cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Right. Hey. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in haul. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. An Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do uh -huh. it. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on your probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio <laughs> Get it live like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. What? Spin a couple bands on the dapper uh. dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Clint. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Yeah. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being inoperative. Uh. So take uh. heed, homie Linda Ed. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown, but uptown. now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Uh. They to troop them uh -huh. and bless up to all the rudiments. Uh -huh.